Hello, I'm Tara Brabison. I'm the Dean of Graduate Research at Flinders University, and welcome to Vlog 75, Making Money Out of Public Speaking. This vlog today is part of the career series that we're implementing in the next few vlogs, but it's hard to offer career advice to any cohort of PhD students, let alone at wonderful Flinders, because our students move from their early to mid 20s right through to their late 70s. We've got students in the high humanities right through to the hard lab-based sciences. So no single bit of career advice could be of use to every single one of you. But this one today is important and it's talking about how we create alternative income streams for you, yes you, during a relatively volatile time for the higher education sector. So this is a session today, and we'll do a few of these, about how to make a living, how to create some money, build an income for you that may be outside of a traditional academic job. And this one today has come via request from a lot of people. Shani wanted me to do this session wonderful. Catherine, hi Catherine. Victoria, Andrew, all of you wanted me to have a session like this today. And I had a conversation with Erin via Skype about this as well. And what these guys and girls were after is me addressing how money is made from public speaking, from doing consultancies and also running training programs. So I think I might run a session on each of those three in the next few because they're all actually quite different, but they're all actually quite significant. So yes, I've made some very, very, very good money from public speaking over the years. And in fact, there have been years in the United Kingdom where I made more money from public speaking and journalism than I did from my academic salary. My speaking fee with corporate clients moves between $1,000 to $5,000, pounds or euros. So that can include expenses, that can exclude expenses. And expenses, of course, include things like travel. So the challenge is that this type of money is incredibly volatile. So you'll have good months and you'll have bad months. You'll have good years and yes, you will have bad years. So today we are talking about how you make money out of public speaking and I'm going to give you really concrete strategies to do this including the language you deploy to ask for money. So this is a real how-to guide this one. Now this is important and I really want to stress this you do have a right to make money out of public speaking. I know all of us me included, take the public intellectual role incredibly seriously. And the importance of disseminating research to public stakeholders is incredibly important. So yes, a lot of that work is conducted for free. But, and this is a really big but, your time is incredibly valuable. And therefore, what I would like you to think through today is how you are respected for your time via payment. I'll tell you the major change in this sphere that happened to me. In fact, it was in my mid-twenties. I just finished my PhD and like a lot of you, I was just so grateful for the speaking gig. I went all over the place, never paid and just going, oh, I'm, it's so nice to be asked, isn't it? It's so nice to be asked. And so you'd be going to all these sorts of places and you'd be paying for fuel and you'd be paying for parking to deliver a speech for them. Mm -hmm. And so in the mid-twenties, I met a wonderful man. He's still a dear friend of mine, Grant Stone. Hi, Grant. Grant, amazing speaker, librarian to the stars, and he was doing his PhD on Barbie at the time. But Grant Stone, one of the most charismatic, magnificent speakers I've ever seen. And he said to me in my mid-twenties when I was at Murdoch University, Tara, I used to do what you do. I used to, people used to ask me to speak and I used to go without hesitation and it used to cost me money in fuel and parking to deliver their speech. And then I suddenly realized, Tara, that these places that I was speaking, they were spending more money on the muffins and the coffee for morning tea than they were paying me. If they can pay for muffins, 
they can pay for a speaker. Changed my life. If they can pay for muffins, they can pay for a speaker. So whenever you're thinking, oh, look, I'm not sure if I'm going to ask, they're paying more for muffins <laughs> than they are paying you as a speaker. So that changed my view overnight. And being paid in our current environment is also about respect and respect for your time and respect for your expertise. So never be embarrassed asking for a speaking fee. Remember, they're paying more for the muffins than they're paying for you. So what I want to do now is start to give you the language to put yourself in a position where you can start asking for a speaking fee. So this is going to require a series of tactics about how to brand yourself and brand up your research so you're ready to go when an opportunity occurs. So you need a very strong sense of who you are of your content expertise and what you can offer to an audience. And the audience really matters here. We're going to keep returning to this during the vlog today, but the audience for your research really matters here. And it may include layers or levels of government, small to medium sized enterprises, SMEs, very big market share there for speaking, crucial. And of course, hospitality, very important as well, tourism industries, but also schools and further education environments. That is a huge area. Whatever your discipline, schools are a key variable here in you getting paid for your speaking. So whatever your area, there are an array of organisations, both for-profit and not for-profit, that can deploy your expertise and you can be paid for it. Think about it. We live in an anti-intellectual age, but there are a lot of organisations out there that really, really want to attract interesting people to deliver interesting content to their staff to freshen them up. And that's a great enterprise and you deserve to be a part of that. So what I would say is work out who you are, work out what your interesting content is and work out who your audience could be. Also recognize the cross platform opportunities that exist as well. And this is sort of the Dean being incredibly proud bit of the vlog. Last year, in one of the early vlogs, we talked about the writing of the small books that's becoming quite a big thing. These tiny books, whether it be for Springer or Emerald or a series of publishers out there. And so many of you, bless you, took my advice and you've gone out and you've had a, a small book accepted by these publishers. Now, that's tremendous. I am so incredibly proud of you. Michelle, looking at you. Unbelievable. But because you've been so successful, I can now tell you the second stage of why these small books really, really matter to a speaking career. So what these small books allow you to do is they're like an intellectual calling card. They map out your expertise. So let me show you how this actually operates. OK, here is one of my short books. Yes, it's the right one. Unique Urbanity. So this book was about how small cities can regenerate, what can be done economically, socially and politically to ensure that these small cities survive and thrive in difficult environments. So pretty important book, this one. So yes, it was a great book, but so many organisations in regional development and tourism contacted me on the back of this book to do a series of speaking gigs. So yes, the book has appeared, but that was the calling card to do a series of speeches in and about small cities and large towns. Here's another example. Here's another one I prepared earlier. This is, yes, Digital Wine. Again, a book about how we use new technology to enable new wine industries. Huge numbers of consultancies emerged, unbelievably, from all sorts of interesting and weird areas around the world, including Italy, that I wasn't expecting, that came from this book. So people wanting to modernise their small wine industry started to use this book and then pay for my expertise. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Here's another one. 
Enabling, yes, right one, Enabling University. So again, great book about how we create social justice and open access for all of our students, whatever their impairment or disability in our universities. And so a whole series of talks, wonderful talks throughout Australia and internationally emerged from this book, uh, particularly from the University of Sydney. Wonderful experience. Thank you for that, guys. But also uh, a series of fantastic consultancies emerged where I was asked to look at a university's practice and see how universal design is operating in their doctoral programs. So small books like this can make a real difference to your speaking career. These short books, your bigger books, your articles act as a calling card and they therefore provide that cross-promotional opportunity. So you have the publication, you do the speech and then it enhances and enlarges the audience for your research. Brilliant, boom, fantastic. So yes, a speaking career is about interesting content, full stop. But it's also about understanding how that content can translate to a diversity of audiences. Now I write in a lot of areas. I'm a bit naughty, I write in a lot of different areas in my career. But only two areas are particularly deployed in my speaking career. And those clustered areas are, very easy to specify, the information literacy, media literacy, multimodality, teaching and learning education. That cluster, huge. That's where I make a lot of my money and have a lot of my speeches. The second area is in urban development, regional development, city imaging, creative industries. So those two areas are where I get my speeches. I write in a, in a whole series of diverse areas beyond that, but you're going to have to be very clear. What's the content that can be marketed for your speeches? A whole career can never be leveraged, but components of it can be. So we've got the content, we've got the audience sorted. Now let's get to the language, how I get you paid. Now obviously every single organization on this planet would like you to work for free. Obviously. But I always remember my old father, Big Kev, big shout out to Big Kev, 89, fantastic legend that he is, and he used to look at me in my mid-twenties before I talked to Grant Stone and say to me, why are you paying for the petrol, like all fathers do of course, why are you paying for the petrol and the parking to do somebody else's speech? How is this a thing? And I used all the language we all do. Oh, it's so nice to be asked. Oh, look, it's great that my work's being recognised. And he, you know, like most old blokes, particularly old Australian blokes, he'd be going, like, whatever. If you're doing that work, you need to be paid for that work. And of course, like all older Australian men, he was absolutely right. So, what I want you to do is start asking to be paid, even a little bit, okay? So when someone asks you if you'd like to do a speech, reply with something like, and I've crafted some language for you here, thank you for your offer. I'd very much like to speak for you, but I need to be paid for my time. That phrasing will work quite nicely in an email. And then you can either ask for expenses so that is $50, $75, ask for your expenses, or you can have, particularly in the early stages, a flat fee of say $200 that covers everything. But the key is to ask, ask. They might say no, but they probably won't because most organizations have a budget line for professional development. And trust me, as someone who's been a, had run a very, very large budget, we had a great budget line for PD and we never exhausted that every single year because I wouldn't pay somebody unless they asked to be paid. If you ask to be paid, you'll be paid. Mm -hmm. So remember that most organizations have a PD budget line. Start to use it. So if you're embarrassed by all of this, start conservatively, $50, $75, but then double it and then double it again, and double it again, and double it again. The key though in all of this is you must be able to deliver. And the question is what you are delivering. Yes, you are delivering content, but when you speak, you are delivering an experience. 
You're delivering, delivering conversation points for somebody to think about and move through their life differently after they've heard you speak. So I'm not saying here, never do a freebie. You certainly, for community organisations, I do freebies all the time as well. If you're politically committed to that organisation, that's great. But I want your standard mode of public speaking to be you are paid to deliver a service. So you can start using phrases like, do you have a budget for speakers? Now most organisations do. So also pick a price point that is appropriate to your organisation. So a local library will have a very different price point to a large corporation, there's no doubt about that. So pick a speaking fee that is appropriate to that organisation and also be aware that conferences or gigs with sponsors, you can ask a higher figure. Tell you why. Almost always what the sponsors are doing, they are paying for the keynote address. So a recent gig I did was $8,000 that was of course in kind, included the travel as much as the speaking fees. And that $8,000 that simply involved me at a certain point during the conference standing up shaking hands with a sponsor and getting a picture taken. So keynotes, always remember the sponsors invariably are sponsoring the keynote. Also develop a record of your talks. People need to see what you can do. They're not going to pay you if they can't see what you can do for them. So I've been quite fortunate over the last 10, 15 years or so, a lot of my big gigs have been recorded. And can I say it's very stressful when you know that's happening because if you stuff it up, you've stuffed it up in front of like thousands of people. So that's a bit unfortunate. Luckily, I've never stuffed it up, so it's gone well. But you need something that captures your capacity to speak and put that online so you can refer people to that. Also, a lot of the big corporate gigs that you will do and the corporate gigs that I've done often provide formal feedback. So literally they get people to fill in a form and talk about their experience. And one of the great relationships, collaborations in terms of speaking I've had in my life has been with Gardner. Gardner is that wonderful international digital research organization. I've loved working with them through Europe and Africa. Fantastic experience, great time of my life. And for Ghana, I had that great moment where I received the second highest ranking in terms of speaking feedback in the history of their organization. So I could go to people and say, I've received the second highest ranking of anyone that's ever spoken for Ghana. Who was the number one on their list? Bill Gates. I'll take second to Bill Gates, eh? Mm -hmm. So if they're gonna kick the tin, they need to see what you can do. So start to use YouTube, record video, record vlogs like this, start to express and show your communication skill. So also start to think about what you are worth and what you are worth within the financial envelope of that particular organization. Now, keynotes attract the most money, but they are the hardest, and they are the rarest. So you'll get a few of them and they're great and important, but they are a rare bird. Frequently to get the keynotes, you have some sort of other notoriety, good or ill, that you require to get those keynotes. Now I've had a few of those and I wrote one particular book that when my obituary is written, when I die, when I die, this book will be mentioned in the first sentence about me. Tara Brabazon, the author of the University of Google. <laughs> uh, and this book, yes, it's sold incredibly well and it, it changed my life. Certain books and articles and things that you do will change your life. This book changed my life and I've got thousands, thousands of speaking offers on the basis and the back of this book. So if you do every now and again, write something like this, you'll make some money off it and not necessarily only from the sale of the book. Okay, so also I really want to stress this bit too. We live in an environment at the moment where it's very difficult to get grants. It's important to keep going, keep applying for grants, all sorts of diverse funding sources. But I can't tell you how many years I have used my speaking fees, used the travel, 
to get me to a particular place and I do my research while I'm there. So I'm delivering a speech, they've paid my travel and expenses to get there and accommodation. And while I'm there, I gather my data, I do my research. So actually the speaking gigs have cross subsidized the research. And that means since 2001, I have not used one dollar of Australian taxpayers' money, British taxpayers' money, or Canadian taxpayers' money, not one dollar, one pound, to get me places. I've never asked, well, oh, could I have the registration for a conference? Could I have the flight for a conference? I've never had to ask that. I make my own way there. Unless I'm paid, I don't do a conference, I don't have to anymore. But also I use that to pay my travel expenses. So remember the value of that in these ages. Now, most academics can manage this system for themselves. We get an offer, you ask for money, you get the money, thanks for playing. I've never used an agent to organize my speaking gigs. Certainly there's been a few years there that it got a bit feral. There were a few years there I had like 45 speeches in a year. And that's nearly one a week, so you can imagine that's pretty interesting. But if your career does take off, and or indeed you're working in a really punchy, powerful research area where there's a lot of interest, then do consider a speaking bureau. They will take a percentage of your fees, but they'll organize everything else for you and represent you well. But for most academics, that's not hugely necessary. What you need to do is get yourself known for a particular slice of content and get yourself known as somebody who can deliver that content well with passion, with enthusiasm and creating a great experience for the audience. And this is the final point I'd like to make in this vlog, and I'm happy to do other work on it if you'd like me to keep going with this stuff. But please remember, in this sort of discussion we're having today, you are being paid to deliver. So it's important that you create a speaking style for which you become known. Now, I'm known around the world that if I'm hired to deliver a talk, I will deliver every single time. I will never fail. You hire me, I will deliver a great, outstanding speech to a big room. So I know how to work a room, I know how to work a big room, and I will not let you down. Okay, the best speakers know <laughs> that speaking is not about the speaker. It's about the audience. It's about the audience. So ask yourself what you can deliver to an audience. Then maybe you want to write a one page promotion, promotional document or record a short video and load that up to LinkedIn so people can see what you can do. And then you're on your way. Now it might only be a small income stream for some of you. It may be very, very large for other members of our community particularly if you're working in technology, technology, in health, in education. This can be huge. And just remember, you deserve those fees. So please let me know if you want any more details. If you'd like a, a follow-up vlog to specify any of these other areas in future, I'm very happy to deliver that. But isn't there something fantastic about in our digital age, that the analog experience of speaking is still seen to be of value. That to me seems remarkable and wonderful and you can benefit from it. So I wish you love, light and peace. Tea out.